Hey everyone, I'm Jason Dean. And I'm Colby Dane. And this is Real Physics, where we tell you what would really happen in Hollywood movies. Because we question these things just as much as you do. The movie this week is the 2010 remake of The A-Team, directed by Joe Carnahan, who is known for his over-the-top action sequences. We're going to analyze one of the most talked about scenes from this movie and show you what would really happen. Take a look. So the resourceful guys of the A-Team escape a C-130 cargo plane blowing up by getting inside of an airdrop-ready tank. But that's not a normal tank, that's the M-8 Buford, which is really important later. There were several variations of the Buford, and this one looks to be armor variation 2 or 3, with a surprise modification we will reveal later. Right, so here we have Faye shooting an already loaded top-mounted gun. And we found out that when Bufords are dropped, they really are fully loaded and ready to go. You know, I argued that point for a long time, thinking there was no way these things were already ammoed up. But you know, I don't know what I was thinking, because otherwise, when would they get their ammo? Oh, <laughs> hang on, right here. Okay, so the Reapers just took out two of the parachutes, putting them in a free fall going straight down. And this looks like Hollywood physics at its worst. Yeah, no kidding. And, and here, comes, here comes that crazy gun recoil tank flying that made the movie trailer so exciting. Well, it's not technically flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it makes for an insane action sequence. Oh, and you know what? Check out the back of the tank in this scene, because it's another important detail we'll talk about later. And splash into the lake. And driving out afterwards. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so, all right, before we begin our calculations, let's talk a little bit about the research we had to do to make sure our calculations were going to be as accurate as they could be. Right, what we're looking at here is an M8 Buford, which is around 22 tons. It's about 44,500 pounds. Based on the variant that we think it is. Right. Wait, so if we know it was an M8 Buford, we could figure out what the frontal area is. And if we know what the frontal area is, we could figure out what the wind resistance is on it. Exactly, because at that point we knew the dimensions. After we figured that out, we started looking into acceptable airdrop speeds for military vehicles. That happens to be 28 feet per second, or around 19 miles per hour. Right. Now, we don't know what the parachute size is exactly, but we can derive it from these figures. Exactly, and we'll get more to that later. For now, let's do some math. Breathe fall is governed by wind resistance, which is a function of frontal area, the coefficient of friction, or how fish-shaped the tank is, and its velocity. At some point, the force exerted by impending doom rushing by will equal the force exerted by gravity. Now, the tank measures about 8 foot by 9 foot, so that's 73 square foot of frontal area, with the drag coefficient of a brick. What is the drag coefficient of a brick? Turns out it's 0.82. Hmm. Now, if you assume that the tank is being correctly deployed at 28 feet per second with three parachutes, each with a drag coefficient of 1.5, look it up. The required chute size has to be 35 meters in diameter. Now we know the chute size. And for verification, three 35 meter chutes happens to be the same combination used by the SpaceX Dragon capsule drop. Look it up. At this point, it seems that the writers based this entire action sequence on real military specs. So take away the two chutes and you would think it's going to dramatically affect their speed. But because air friction is dependent on the square of the velocity, the single chute terminal velocity only increases to 33 miles per hour. Or pretty much like driving down a residential street. Let's do some more math when the cannons come into play. This is where things get even crazier. Alright, so now they fire the cannon every 3.5 seconds. The projectile portion of an M829A1 armor-piercing round is roughly about 10 kilograms. Or about 22 pounds. Right. So, thrust is defined as the change of mass divided by the change in time multiplied by the velocity. So, we have 10 kilograms divided by 3.5 seconds times 1,750 meters per second. That happens to be the max muzzle velocity of a Rheinmetall 120 millimeter M256 cannon. We end up with a whopping 5,000 newtons of opposing force, or about 1,220 pounds of thrust. Well, 1,220 pounds of thrust sounds like a lot, but when you consider the 44,500 pound mass of the tank, well, it's good for about a half a mile per hour. So the director threw in that part to add to the action, but in reality, each time they fired, the tank would slow up about half a mile per hour, and then immediately approach the terminal velocity again of 33 miles per hour. So it was useless. Right, yeah, so they're also heading into the lake to help break their fall. But even at that speed, the water is going to hurt. However, the ratio of the tank's weight to its frontal area limits its deceleration. By using the formula for drag and Newton's second law, splashdown results in 3.13 Gs. Very survivable. So hooray, they're alive! But now they're stuck at the bottom of a lake. You can't start an internal combustion engine underwater without a substantial air source or at least a snorkel. Right, yeah, but 
Here's the huge twist. Check out your screen. On the left is the rear of the tank in the movie. On the right is the rear of an actual M8 Buford tank. Now, let me show you a Buford tank variant that more closely resembles the one in the movie. Now, the one in the movie matches up even closer to this one. This is a special variation with a hybrid engine. That's right, this is an electric tank. The guys making this movie did their research. They could drive it right out of the lake without firing up the combustion engine. All right, well, <laughs> as over the top as Hollywood can be, believe it or not, what you just saw on screen could actually happen. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but as far as we can tell, it's plausible. Leave it to the A-team to prove us wrong. We're going to call this one real physics. <laughs> I know, and you know, I know how you math and physics enthusiasts love to argue. We really do look forward to your comments and corrections down below, and maybe we'll even argue with you. Or not. <laughs> I'm Jason Dean. And I'm Colby Dane. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next week. Hey, no, for, wait, we don't like, you don't like it. Is it, is it thumbs out? Are we, are we going revolver or are we going semi-automatic? Like, right, so the tank is an M8 Buford. Now, the Buford <clears throat> tank. Tanks weigh a lot. Ugh. Before we begin our calculations, let's talk a little bit about. Turns out it's 0.82. Well, that was so dirty funny. 0.82. You're dirty, dirty, nasty 0.82. The last time you did 0.82. Now let's do some math when the cannons come into play. That's where things get way even crazier. Way even crazier in high school, maybe. <laughs> way! Way!